Looks like recording is good. Gain-wise, I have to point my face that way, I guess. <sighs> Pardon me, please. You're a hot. Okay, maybe that is better. So, I thought I would read the comments for the video I posted regarding free will. Um, I haven't read most of them, so it will be new to me as well as everybody else, I presume. Uh, Blank Tester made a good point. Uh, Daniel Dennett has two different ideas regarding free will, and this is called compatible, compatibilis. Uh, he accepts the fact that the universe appears to be deterministic, and I have to agree. He also uses a different form of free will regarding human choices and biology, that is, the mind. And he accepts that the, the illusion of free will is a version of free, free will. Uh, I do not agree. I mean, knowing that you're feeling like you are making actual decisions based on competent information and your prejudices and your knowledge and your education and shit like that, illusionary but it's still a form of free will this is the compatibility version of free will and determinism etc etc it's still determined however so splitting hairs never made any sense to me uh, philosophy was i'm a rock and dirt kind of person i want to have you know physical shit and and the lofty mental crap crap that's right i said philosophy is crap doesn't appeal to me it just never has never will uh, philosophers can go sit in a corner and discuss a subject for weeks and not agree not sway anybody all they do is talk and they're actually talking to themselves. And Daniel Dennett is doing that, even though apparently he has an audience. I don't get that. Christy Mallar, Mallory, Mallory, I'm sorry. Audiobooks. For atheists, Dennett and other and the other remaining four horsemen do really good impressions of priests. I agree. It creeps me out that there are atheists out there that appear to be atheist leaders. <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, you want to know what atheists have concluded on, uh, you know, subjects such as, oh, I don't know, love, how to bake cornbread properly. Um, by the way, you take a cast iron uh, skillet with a cast iron lid for it, and you grease the bloody shit out of the skillet, and then you pour in the batter, and then you break, bake it in the oven. Only what? Anyhow, yeah. If if any atheist out there tells you differently about cornbread, they are not a atheist leader. And atheist leaders, um, if somebody out there who is an atheist and believes that they're actually a, a leader, um, no, bad, go to bed without dinner. <laughs> Molly Griswold, who in the past I have observed is actually intelligent. Um, this is not a flattery, but I have noticed that on comments on videos I make, people tend to be more intelligent than videos, um, comments that I've seen elsewhere on like science shit. They are intelligent, appears to be. But on everyday other crap, uh, people tend to be morons. 
I asked my my counselor. I, I suggested to my counselor that almost everybody I meet is an idiot. And she said, well, no, David, they're just different, David. Um, just because you believe that you're intelligent, and that's still debatable. Actually, I, I added the still debatable part. She didn't say that. Doesn't mean that everybody's an idiot. So, ah, thank you so much for this video. You're welcome. When I first heard the, of the study mentioned, which shows increased impulsivity after reading that free will does not exist, comma, I immediately compared it to a religious person quickly finding out that God does not exist. I agree. Um, um, I know where she's going with this. Sure, their behavior might change for a few hours, days, or weeks. But run that study again and do a one-year follow-up. Exclamation point. That is why I think that is an excellent comment. Um, I have observed the same thing. And I have observed that in skeptics as well. I mean, if, if a, a, somebody who rejects what is demonstrably false... Uh, most of the time, but yet they yet they have a cherished belief, and they are shown, you know, this kills your cherished belief. The skeptic will very briefly accept that the belief was wrong, check in again, you know, a little while later, you know, a few weeks or so. Um, person is still flogging the belief that he knows damn well is, or she is not true. Uh, human behavior. I, I am sure, without a doubt, that I have done that thousands of times. I try to be belief-free, but I'm not. There's no way in hell I can be belief-free because I don't know everything. So, that is why I love Google. It knows everything. So, thumbs up. I will heart that. Okay, I really enjoyed your video, Logical Music Man, and thank you. So, um, I'm going to check out your channel. I have bookmarked. Check out this channel. We have another 2AHD cat. No, we cannot prove that we have a free will because there is no way to de de definitively prove things that are abstract. I agree. Free, the concept of free will, it's very difficult to add a definition and a descriptive to that. Well, I mean, as a descriptive, um, what can be ob uh, objectively agreed upon, and then all of the subjective parts that fit in with the concept of free will. I have not seen a decent definition that most people will agree with. Continuing, science has taught us that people are often at the mercy of the brain functions of their body. The free will is not something that can be seen, so there is no proof of its existence. I, it is my belief, and I could be wrong, that uh, modern physics, um, not, you know, not mechanical physics and stuff like that, but theoretical physics um, has precluded, excluded, and made impossible the, um, I, the ability for anything in the universe to make a definitive choice that is not already decided for them by previous causes and effects. So I have to agree. I mean, people can argue about it. And they have, I don't know, you know, since before Plato. Uh, yeah. Okay, so the Daniel. Oh, by the way, the Daniel. Daniel. Um, I have been sort of enjoying your videos. The, um, some of them I find actually disturbing. And it is not my place to suggest mental health care or even you know, talking to somebody, but um, 
based on a life, my life of more than 60 years and the, the experience that I've had, um, some of your ideas seem self-abusive. So, I am quoting him. This is one thing science gets right. Because there is a created order, there is no free will. You just think you have free will. When you drive in your car, your, not your, at the mercy of your soundings, before you drive in your car, or if you don't drive in your car, you're manipulated by your soundings. So it seems like you choose what you choose, but that choice is not free if you will. Um, the gist is, I agree with him, except the part about the created order. That did not have an intelligence behind it. Uh, it's pretty cool um, what um, theoretical physicists, and particularly astrophysicists that do quantum mechanics, to describe the earliest time, and I use the word time, um, specifically, uh, the universe and everything that would later be in it was predetermined, and that I will, that I called the created order. Um, as most people know these days, um, what we experience here in the real universe um, has four dimensions. And the zeroth dimension is time. Can't have a large universe without time unless you have a universe that has matter and it has you know, specific laws um, we can say similar to the one that we are in, except that time does not exist or it is extremely fast compared to the time here in this universe. We can have entire universes just <laughs> That's right, I said <laughs> um, in an instant and massive uh, bodies of galaxies in, in, within that universe and it could expand like for billions and billions of this universe's years and without time we don't have a created order is my opinion so there is not a creator that I can determine so um, I consider the laws of physics to be the creator uh, Equinox Shadow made a uh, comment to the Daniels comment. There are consequences to your choice. Choices. Why do so many people take life so seriously? Why do so many people need a sense of purpose? And that um, he, he or she went on and I agree that the concept of that Daniel Dennett um, considers free will matches this. So, um, you know, we have to assume that the illusion is true, even if one knows it's not true that free will exists, because there are consequences to our behavior. We can't just say, oh, the universe made me do that, cause and effect made me do that, even though it is true. So, Truth sucks a lot of the time, but I think my opinion only, even though knowledge might sting and maim and kill, it is worth gathering because there's no way of knowing when or even if that knowledge will be helpful to in the future or now, etc. So. Knowledge is, in my opinion, always good, even horrible knowledge. If I have rectal cancer or colon cancer, I want to know because then I can make free will choices on what to do about it, if anything. 
So, and person also, Equinox Shadow also mentioned Armageddon, the uh, prophecy of God's will upon humanity. Where does, where, whether, therefore, is free will? Poof. Sorry, the Daniel, but you just got kicked in the balls by Equinox Shadow. <laughs> so, I don't know to feel sorry for you or applaud Equinox Shadow. Another comment to, to the Daniel. To the Daniel. If we had to calculate consciously from scratch our every move, we'd never get anything done. Most of us probably act too much on automatic. But where is the happy medium? Two thumbs up to Catherine Gieselin. That's a... I was going to say fucking. I'm trying to clean up my act. That is a really good uh, assert, uh, statement. Where the fuck... I'm so... <sighs> See how automatic it is? <laughs> what happened to me? How did this happen? And this up here? So, um, yeah, if we had free will... We would do nothing. <laughs> I mean, it's, just, it's like, oh, because everybody else would have free will. And it would just be fucking chaos out there. Um, turtles would have free will. <laughs> and they might, I don't know, pick up knives and start stabbing humans. Um, certainly raccoons will. I mean, they'll just, like, you know, gnaw through the wall and go to the kitchen cabinet and they'll pick up a butcher knife because they have hands and then they'll while the humans are sleeping quietly somewhat peacefully except for me I never sleep and they creep up on the human with the blade and then they like nudge him with the other hand and say you know the filberts were really good um, that you gave, you know, the wild birds and shit, but hand over the rest to me, or you don't have the free will to decline, shall we say. So, yes, where would we draw the line? Uh, if humans have free will, and I will make this, many people will not agree with me. If humans have free will, then rocks have free will. Waterfalls have free will. Ravens, I just saw one out there, have free will. What's the difference other than I have a brain, mostly? Most people out there have a brain. And I am sad to say that um, their brains seem to be a lot better than mine on average. Why not inanimate objects? I mean, we are just a collection of um, physical processes that are completely chemically determined, and chemistry is completely determined, and I use the word determined, by the laws of physics. So, imagine a universe where free will exists. I cannot. So, kudos to Kath... Catherine Gieslin, and by the way, I love the name Catherine. I mean, I always have. <sighs> and the Daniel mentioned, and he agreed, and he said, and that's why our will is not free. Because anything goes, and if I had free will, um, I could probably levitate, I assume. Because to have free will, in my opinion, means to violate the laws of physics. Okay, the, the Daniel uh, made a follow-up. The happy medium is in not knowing. Not knowing the science which in time, which is just a connection of symbols to value, we think we're choosing our fate. Mm -hmm. By the way, the Daniel before you can tell most of the scientists out there that they're wrong, um, some remedial high school um, spelling might help. 
Um, the happy medium is in not knowing. I would ask the Daniel what he means by in not knowing. In not knowing that we have free will, therefore we have a version of free will, even though it was determined by the Creator. This, if, if that is the gist of what I think he means, then I do not understand the statement. Uh, fortunately, Ms. Gieslin uh, replied to the Daniel, quote, Most of the automatic behaviors were chosen at a time and worked. Maybe when we were very young children and unknowing. Maybe learn from someone older or another time and circumstance. Apart from basic biological processes, we have chosen what appeared to be the best, easiest, quickest path at the moment as individuals and societies. We are always limited by circumstances and circumstances change. This is a version of the um, compatibility that Daniel Dennett uh, embraces, where our choices are strictly um, restricted by society and our experiences and our knowledge and what has happened to us, what we have happened to other people and other objects and, and you know, life events and shit like that. That determines what we will do next, what we will think next. Um, I see no free will in that, and I believe that Ms. Gieslin agrees uh, we are constrained, so there's no way to step out of that restraint. If we could, then we would have free will, I guess. Oh, <laughs> Double Cross Swine, quote, I'm going down to South Park. Gets a heart. Let's see, here we go. Heart and thumb up. P. Patrick Tucker, Tucker's. There is still some debate about how much free will we have. There's a shitload of debate, and I don't understand why. I thought the issue was settled in the 1920s. Continuing, but for now, we don't have a lot of free will, and that is not an excuse for any behavior. It's complicated. This needs a long conversation. I agree and I disagree, of course. Um... We have already had the long conversation. Long and long and long. Other than talking about sex, I believe free will is probably number four or so on the list. You know, just actually it's probably like 30 or 40, but I'm being funny. Um, it is complicated, but in my view, as a super determinist, I think it is pretty goddamn, th pretty simple. I think the issue of free will and the debate has been completed, done, over with. We know the answer, but that's just me. <sighs> Paul de Hoff, quote, no free will. Can't say it any better. Um, three words means what they say. Like in the film uh, Ghost and Mrs. Muir. I can't type that word. Means what it says, doesn't it? It certainly does. I love that film, by the way. Catherine Gieslin. I'm glad um, she has made more comments. I mean... Um, because I love the word, the name, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> My decisions are mine, conscious or unconscious. Excellent point. Everyone makes decisions without their conscious... Uh, what's the word? Participation. I have observed my brain doing shit and not telling me. Not, not even implying or hinting what it has concluded and it 
forces the me part to behave on that conclusion. So I am and uh, Catherine Geislin is completely um, responsible for her behavior. Even if free will does not exist, even if the behavior is driven by some uh, unconscious um, conclusions and decisions that the executive functioning part of the human um, does n is not aware of. Continuing to quote, if the, if the universe has determined what I will do, it has determined who I am. This is why I like reading her comments. I mean, just, uh, I mean, whoever wrote this is fucking in, fuck! I'm, as I said, I'm trying to clean up my act. Is intelligent. I mean, wham. And a excellent writer, by the way. I, in quotes, am making my decisions either way. The supreme negation of my agency would be, it's God's will. Or, the devil made me do it. That's either Democrat or Republican, by the way. In sequence. Your decision of meditating, meditation suppressing conscious thought sounds much like Buddhist teaching about the brain and as just another organ. I have actually sent a request to a Buddhist here in Santa Fe to discuss the issue of observing my brain making uh, hundreds of interactions to come up with a conclusion or a thought. And I, I have wondered if that is actually a Buddhist teaching and that if that is what some Buddhists strive for. So I am seeking, I am not seeking Buddha consciousness. I am seeking a Buddhist who is conscious. <sighs> Describing meditation in everyday language is extremely difficult, which I have found. And yes. I believe most people would do that. Um, stupid people would find it easy. And, of course, there is a lot of disagreement on the responsibility and me identity of the entirety of the brain. Um, we know that the me part of the human brain is a small part of the human brain. And um, I call that the executive functioning part. Um, a lot of psychiatrists um, call that also the executive functioning. And I've read about executive functioning and the failure, the non-functioning, non-functioning. See, I even got a fuck in there also. <sighs> Pity me. Send cannabis or something. Some, anyhow, the non-functioning executive functioning part of the brain when that breaks down um i have difficulty with the executive functioning which i have mentioned um i will not give specifics but if i were living in the rural world outside right now i could not do it so me entire the me identity of the entirety of the brain. Um, continuing what she wrote, I do want to say thank you for your videos. You're welcome. Um, I make videos out of ego, by the way, and arrogance, and hubris, and narcissismism. They help me on those very rare but still occurring moments when I feel a bit guilty for being somewhat of an urban hermit since retirement. You are supposed to be. That is what retirement is. Getting away from the man swarm, the maddening crowd. Because I assume this person is in the United States of America, North America, and... What passes mostly for how we live in our societies, plural, out there in the United States of America, that is uh, 
artificial is the best word. People out there are living artificial lives, and they have to, to make a living and to eat. And given the choice to not live the way that millions and millions and millions of people do just in the United States, I would hope they would uh, decide not to live the way that they're living and to actually live the way they want to live. Something, a life that makes them uh, content and fulfilled in some way. Um, so being a hermit, in my way of thinking, that should be the default. That is the goal of, of retiring. <laughs> um, you know, you've been in the real world for decades, and it is healthy to step out for a while, and it's not help healthy to step out from from now on. All human brain, unfortunately, needs human interaction and human companionship to be healthy, and the human that does not need that needs to be in a asylum for the criminally insane. So, don't feel guilty about being a hermit. Um, you should feel proud to be one of us. So, don't grow this shit. I wear this shit because my face is, is ugly. Uh, so, Always an introvert, though relatively at ease in social situations. I don't know if this is private. Um, she wrote this, so I have, quote, pulled, my, pulled into my shell, end of quote, and slam the door and find partial deafness and mobility great excuses for avoiding my fellow humans. I have never needed an excuse. Take humans as they are, and everyone intelligent will come to the conclusion I don't want to be around them they're crazy they're homicidal they kill everything <laughs> uh, uh, anyhow I mean yeah said humans try to make me feel quote wrong in a quote and people who do that are selfish bastards by the way, parenthetical element, and I feel, and I may feel guilty for not feeding wrongs at times, feeling wrongs, and I may be, f and I may feel guilty for not feeling wrong at times in the parenthetical elements. And your videos are kind and appreciated. Um, every time I see a new like, a little part of my ego inflates a tiny bit more. I mean, we're talking typical gas giant sized ego here. So one tiny little bit more seems like it is not noticeable, but I do appreciate it. Continuing the quote, every aspect of my brain prefers non-human companionship, especially cats. But I live in the Bible belt. I'm sorry might influence my opinion of my own species. Yes. I I have heard from I won't say hundreds. Many people who have expressed the same thing. They are they are so weary of humanity that they need to find some relief away from humans and their their irrational expectations and their irrational behavior. All of which they have no free will over. Get us back on topic. So, um, like I mentioned in my memoir, there is a time and a place for isolation and hermitage, but for um, sound mental health, it has to end. Mm. If you can do it longer than I can, then you are more grounded and more steady than I am because I need human companionship and I really hate to admit that. 
uh, Crop t Kitten 2000, quote, Dennett is really determined to believe in free will, end of quote. Yes, heart, thumb up. Excellent. I mean, he go, Dennett goes out of his way to find a way to meet his need to have free will, um, at least on the biological, sociological um, level. And like he said in another video, um, he said, looking towards science to discuss um, free will and the existence of free will or not is wrong. It's, it's the wrong place to look, is what he said. And we should look at biology. Show of hands out there, please. I mean, you don't have to, but what drives biology? The laws of physics, i.e. chemistry. That is cause and effect. That is the physics laws governing the universe. If you're looking at biology and you want a feeling of free will, then I agree with him. Daniel Dennett. So, Tobias Hagstrom. Quote, If you were to be informed that some other person was controlling your brain, supposedly, then I could see that re resulting in you doing selfish and immoral things more because you have another person who you presume is accountable. I don't agree. Continuing quote, however, if you don't have free will in the sense that there is no ontological distinct mechanism for will to exist as its own essential force that affects reality, that could lead to similar forms of thinking because people like making excuses for themselves. But the key is to stress that whenever you think, gee, I guess I have no free. So is it really my fault? If I do X, end of quote, that is not some neutral observation by the universe of your condition. It is a part of the condition of being you. I do not refrain from inflicting any uh, not harm but suffering. I refrain from committing suffering and I look to ways to reduce suffering not because of the consequences, not because of the positive consequences, not because of the negative consequences. It is because it is an innate part of me to be virtuous. I mean, I mean, here's my ego again. So um, I could not, without serious brain injury or mental distress, deliberately inflict suffering upon somebody. I would not rob a bank because that is committing suffering on people. So, um, even bankers, I, I, I mean, a lot of them really need to jump off the edge and, you know, like, maybe yell a little on the way down so that we can, you know, listen to their progress as they, you know, as the cement comes up to meet them, you know. But um, suffering is the common enemy. And I do everything I can to not increase suffering in the world. And this is it's not a conscious choice on my part. It is who I am. And I believe, and I hope I am correct, that that is part of most people. They don't, m most people don't wake up and say, you know, I'm going to inflict harm on that bastard who, you know, gave me the finger, um, you know, taking my parking spot. I'm going to wait till that person's taking that parking, parking spot again. And I'm going to be unpleasant and let that person know, you know, I, you know, that's in my mind, suffering. 
So um, people don't, healthy people don't do that. And I hope that is true. And I hope my opinion is true. So knowing that free will does not exist, I disagree emphatically that knowing that fact, and I consider it a fact, will not make people worse. Um, people who believe they have free will, they are generally um, just like the people who know that free will does not exist. And a shitload of those people who believe they have free will are horrible people. They inflict suffering. So, either or, I don't see how it could possibly change a human's behavior. Uh, I consider most human behavior innate in humanity. Hard-coded, hard-wired, genetically dispositioned. And society curbs some behavior and it mangles and destroys and it crushes other behavior. So, Richard J., I'm quoting, I don't quite get what you mean about thinking and patterns. I have Asperger's syndrome, which manifests in me being able to fix almost anything and remember much science. Ditto, by the way, Richard J., I can look at a broken something and know exactly how to fix it. I can look at a physical process like a manufacturing floor and see where the problems are and how to improve the process within a couple of minutes. And engineers, they will take weeks and weeks. And I've actually done this um, in corporate America, um, Baxter Paramax Corporation. Um, I have actually done this on the bequest of the president and the vice president of manufacturing. So, Richard J., we are kindred spirits. Send pizza, please. Continuing the quote. And remember, much science, but everyday life at most times is oblivious to me, hence I'm not very social. Ditto. Welcome to being Asperger's. It sucks limes. A lot of the time. Uh, Richard J., I do believe that you are referring to executive functioning, which, like I mentioned, I have time, uh, difficulty with. Continuing to quote, Hell, it took me three tries just to write this and make sense. Richard J., I would like you to know that when I first applied for a driver's license in California decades ago, I could not fill out the form at the DMV, Department of Motor Vehicles. I could not fill out the form. I tried and I tried and I tried. I went through a shitload of forms. Uh, just They were stacking up. I was crumpling them up and uh, there was a huge pile and I could not fill out the form. Impossible. So I gave up. I had somebody else fill out the form for me. And I'm not an idiot. It's just the executive functioning part was not working that day. I hope I'm not an idiot. And by the way, you are not an idiot, I assume, because I can see that you write well. Writing problems must be from dyslexia that I seem to have overcome when I was young, but seems to be getting worse as I get older. Hope I made sense. Thanks for your videos. I do enjoy them. And thank you, Richard J., for mentioning that. When it comes to free will, how is it that someone with dyslexia um, does not know when to change lanes when they see a sign that says, right lane closed ahead or left lane closed ahead and the person driving does not know if they're in the, the lane that is going to close or not and they have a 50 50 chance of changing lanes and being correct how does free will apply to that i cannot 
think really hard and make instant choices. It's either one or the other. I have to contemplate, and I, um, most people with dyslexia, I assume, have to contemplate uh, the subject. I have visual and tactile um, ways of letting me know what is left and right. I tap my hand. I do not know that this is left, but when I type it, I tap it, I know it's left. I don't know if this is my right side or not. I have to tap it, and I have to see that I am tapping it, and I feel it. And I know it's the right part or side. So, wither free will. Ditto um, non-functioning or poorly functioning executive functioning. Scarlet Pookie. And I love that name. Commit, uh, quoting. I'll admit that I'm not good at this sort of debate, but it sounds to me like Dennett is arguing, quote, if, pe if people believe they have no free will, then they'll choose to do bad things, end of quote. I see a flaw in that, and this person is absolutely correct. What more needs to be said? Um, I do not believe Daniel Dennett uh, conclusion is correct, like I mentioned. Uh, Graf Walker left a comment for Scarlet Pookie. Quote, well, you certainly can't make a blanket statement and say that it couldn't cause harm in all cases as digital file seems to be implying. I did not. Of course, a change in beliefs can change our behavior. Yes. Parenthetical element. That would fit perfectly with determinism as well. End of quote. Yes. I have not said, and I hope I did not imply, that knowing free will does not exist will not cause some people out there to go, you know, commit suffering, um, evil acts, uh, criminal acts, um, abusive acts. I have not implied that they will not do that because they know that free will does not exist. Human beings being what they are, a um, shitload of people take any excuse possible to do ill will and inflict suffering and, and harm on people. It's part of being a human. It's part of being an ape. So, Brian Stevens. I think it's not what we think at all. I think that since at low local levels, quantum, um, I believe that's the, the why Lowy means um, very tiny um, quantum field effects and stuff like that, causality doesn't hold. It is indicative that it becomes purely probabilistic when a preponderance of events occur that all convene to produce a certain outcome. It becomes a causal since we make choices given options in this chain of probabilities. <sighs> Long uh, running sentence. It bec uh, then predeterminism is faulty. No outcome is predetermined until a sufficient amount of even teens occur to produce it. Continuing the law of run-on sentence. Since we can option that probability on a local level to a point. We can't fly without machines, for example. Um, I see a shitload of words and then a period. So, quantum mechanics and the quantum level of reality has nothing to do with being able to have free will or not. By the way, um, probabilistic behavior of quantum particles is still deterministic. It is just not uh, determined. <laughs> I mean, um, it is probabilistic, but it is determined because we know that the probability of uh, placement and uh, like other vectors 
of a particle always oh, sums up to one. So we know that it is not random. So um, probabilistic does not mean that we have free will, and certainly not at the quantum level. So I've I've read this um, conclusion by, from other people, and it has never made any sense to me. Um, doesn't make any sense. <sighs> I agree with TMM's take on this. I have not read that um, yet. Free will being a mostly meaningless concept. Uh, animals are decision-making machines. The, through a combination of factors that are either deterministic or random. There's nothing one can meaningfully call free will in that. Yes. If it's random, it is not free will. If it is determined, it is not free will. Indeterminism does not mean there is or is not free will. It just means that it is not determined. Um, but once we have, like in, in the quantum level, probabilistically it is indetermined. But we know, in the end, what the conclusion is. It is determined, even though we have not actually seen the probability be determined. This is what is called the collapse of the wave function. A wave function is actually a mathematical algorithm. And once a particle is observed, that wave collapses into absolute certainty that, yes, this particle combined with this particle, and it did an interaction, and we know this result happened. So probability does not mean forever undetermined unless that particle doesn't interact with anything. Uh, Graf Walker replied to none of your business, but whether someone believes in free will or not could definitely change their behavior. Yes. Desert File is just plain wrong in that it is a completely different view of humans and depending on their previous belief, could drastically change their actions. Um, if I implied that suddenly learning that free will does not exist and therefore people are not going to change their behavior for the worse or the better, then I apologize. I did not want to impl imply that. I did not mean to imply it. I know how humans are. None of your business replied to Graf Walker. Well, sure it could. Both him and a study he references acknowledges this. According to more research, these changes seem to be temporary, though. And the truth of a statement is not dependent on the reaction people might have to hearing it. Um, Catherine pointed that out also. It's temporary generally speaking. Uh, Dr. Wong, whom I am always annoyed with and appreciative of, said, unpredictability equals free will assumption. Yes, I agree. Dr. Wong also wrote, free will, like chaos entropy, chance or randomness stems from a naturally occurring complexity exceeding the human parsing ability. Excellent. So we just give up and apply a crude conceptual overgeneralization. Since we cannot accurately, accurately predict human choice making, free will is as useful a title as anything else. That is Dennett's point, by the way, from what I can determine. Technically, it does not exist. Effectually, it does. That is Dennett's position. And I see problems with it. Um, what, what Dennett calls the biological aspects of free will. Um, Dr. Wong has pointed out succinctly. <sighs> I'm going to... Athagoras. What an awesome... YouTube name, Aethagoras. I also practice meditation, and I have a similar sp 
experience of thoughts arising without my involvement. I have always found that the beliefs of most people have about free will are nonsensical and inherently self-contradictory or inconsistent. Welcome to humanity, dude! Or dudette. Yes. Um, people who have free will, or believe they have free will, um, they often don't act like they have free will. They often act like they don't believe that they have free will. Devil made me do it. Um, yes. Um, this person pointed out uh, thoughts arising without involvement. I say participation. Um, it is an observation that the executive functioning part of the brain observes how the brain is actually coming up with the shit that it comes up and then, as I mentioned in my previous video, informs the executive functioning part of the brain. So, um, there is a time gap. It is very brief, but it does exist in my brain and in Athagoras' uh, brain, apparently. So, um, I would like to point out just how short of a time span that is. It is very short. I mean, it's just wham! There went a hundred concepts that the brain had worked through and came up to this conclusion and then it told, told the me part of my brain. Just wham! There's a hundred. Wham! There's a hundred and fifty. So it is extremely fast. It is as fast as chemical interactions, I guess. Um, so, it is kind of disturbing, but it is also fascinating to observe this. Dr. Wong, um, so he's admitting to being an obnoxious troll. Yes, I admit that. He concocted a thought experience. Oh, we're talking about Dennett. Damn it! I want to be the obnoxious troll. Um, uh, Dr. Wong has pointed out that um, uh, Dennett's analogy is full of crap, basically. I mean, Dr. Wong is far more polite um, than, you know, Dennett's thought experience, experiment uh, does not fit an ad analogy because it's not analogous. Oh. Oh. Surgically implanting a brain chip with specific medical care instructions equals random science news. Science news eliminates individual abilities of prediction of cause effect while being arrested. He's continuing on with Daniel Dennett's um, idiotic thought experiment. So, as um, Dr. Wan Wong pointed out again, criminal, criminal, criminal conviction requires intent to commit a crime. Um, in United States jurisprudence, actions prove intent, and then it is up to the accused and the, the accused attorney, as far as I understand, to show that the intent was not there. So it sucks being a person with poor executive functioning and little compassion. Dr. Wong, I have no inner dialogue. <laughs> that means you're dead, dude. <laughs> I'm just like, Ooh, no, not even a dial tone up there. So, um, I really hope for your sake, Dr. Wong, that you are wrong. <laughs> and angry, not so old hippie, uh, he always cracks me up. Quote, Daniel Dennett, maybe one out of 200 million, 300 million people even heard the name, <laughs> that name. I have no clue who he is. Um, I am familiar with Dr. Dennett. Um, I believe he's a doctor. Um, if you want to call philosophy uh, doctorate, a doctor. Um, Edward Paul Al Abbey, my god, had a doctorate in psych uh, 
philosophy. <laughs> and he knew it was just utter crap. Um, you know, it was absolutely worth nothing. But he needed that for um, higher education. So um, Daniel Dennett uh, writes essays on social topics. And when he swerves into science area, he usually crashes and burns, in my opinion. Deshi Black Sheep, quote, If people don't believe in free will, they commit all the crimes they want, end of quote. By the way, that's a quote within a quote. This sounds familiar. Yes, it is a familiar concept. Knowing free will does not exist. Some people will go crazy, go have it, go berserk, and do horrible things that they would not otherwise do. George Anderson, you're totally right man, and I love seeing your spelled properly. When I see it not spelled properly, a little part of me dies, and it is replaced with outrage that I can't correct the person physically. <laughs> so, you're totally right, man. Not sure why Dennett can't separate facts from moral philosophy, because he's a philosopher. <laughs> Jerry Coyne also makes a great case that we're talking about reality and there's no reason to suppress the truth. He is correct also. Um, knowledge is knowledge. We apply knowledge. I'm sorry. Some of us apply knowledge. Um, that's the real world. So, knowing that free will does not exist, that is the reality. It doesn't matter if Daniel doesn't like it in his moral philosophy and his moral code seems to be injured. So, reality, dude. Continuing, George Anderson. When you think it through, we are doomed to make decisions. But in no way does this nullify the decision-making process. We are responsible for our actions. Yes. Damn right. Like I mentioned, mental illness... The person is still responsible, and that sucks limes, but mentally ill people can be guilty and uh, of crimes. Uh, the mental illness does not negate their guilt or their um, non-guilt, if that's even relevant. Um, actions and behaviors have consequences, and responsibility lies in the person making those actions and that behavior. Uh, no excuses except at the punishment stage. Uh, continuing, George Anderson, quote, We don't know why we make decisions precisely, and we shouldn't expect to, in the same way that we don't know which side of the coin is going to settle on when we flip it. Our brains process finite sets sets of information. Yes. Continuing quote. This is just a fact, and to say we should shy away from facts is just embarrassing, and Daniel should know, or strive to know better. <coughs> <coughs> yeah. Well put. <coughs> Pardon me, please. <coughs> So, I want to thank everybody who contributed and participated in the comments of the video that I made because I am interested in the subject and I need to cough some more. <coughs> and I don't think anything more needs to be said by anyone ever on the planet on the subject of free will because it's in my opinion, the debate has been settled, and has been for a long time.
Tata.